Hi again, guys. This is a just quick demonstration of Mueller Preslow approach for calculating shear, moment, and reaction. And basically, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this type of examples from one of the books that they are already explained in the book, but I'm going to do it now step by step uh, with these manipulatives that I have here so you can see how easy it is. First, finding the reaction at a, a. I say A. Let's find the reaction at A. A. I want to keep just the same thing. Influence line for the reaction at A. Okay, influence line for the reaction at A. This is our girder right there. This is our girder. What do we do? We get this, we release the support, we keep this one, and we put a set of guided rollers there. When I put a set of guided rollers there, remember, it's like I'm pushing this up as a piece, like that, in that part, and that will define my influence line. I couldn't be, it couldn't be simpler than that, honestly. Now, the influence line should be like that. This is that, this is that. This distance is one. And then you can calculate how much it is based on geometry. You can say one is as this distance, as this is as the total distance. And same thing with this other side. Done. Second, now we have this. And we have a roller, a roller, and a pin. And we have to calculate the reaction. Uh, but this is not quite like that. Because we have a, if we have this, this is indeterminate. And then if I do that, then I'm going to have curves. So this is not the problem. The problem actually has a hinge somewhere here. A hinge. Remember, it has to be statically determinate. So 2, 3, 4, minus 1, 3. Now it's statically determinate. So if we have that beam, let me reconstruct the beam using the, the things here. Uh, another one of these, I guess, too big. This one maybe. Yeah, this works. Okay. Now let me switch it like that. There you go. This is what we have. And now what we have to do for this one is just apply the reaction at A because this is what we have to do. We are going to apply this reaction at A, we are going to eliminate that roller, and we are going to apply the reaction at A in that direction, keeping this point as a pivot point, and keeping this point as a pivot point. So when you do that, if I apply this with my thumb, I'm going to just put in my finger here just to keep it, and my thumb is going to push up, I'm going to put my finger here, and what is happening, as you can see, this is going up, 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 and this is pivoting on top of this part. So this never moves on the support. This goes high, this pivots here, and this goes down. What is the influence line for this? The influence line for this then, remember, this is going to go up in this direction. This is going to go up to the hinge, and then this is going to come to the pivot point and it's going to be there and once again this distance the one that we are uh, eliminating or replying or replacing and applying is one and you can calculate either one of the others next one next one is just this it's a fixed support fixed here it doesn't move in any direction okay now if i want to convert this into a uh, the reaction in Y, I have to eliminate the uh, reaction in Y, but I have to keep the moment. So if I have to keep the moment, what I'm doing basically here is I'm, I'm keeping this type of this type of mechanism, a guided roller, and this is like here. So now the idea for the reaction at A is that this is not going to be able, when I see this, this is not going to be able to do this, but it's going to be able to go up and down. And if that is the case, then the only thing that it can do, if I apply this value here and cannot pivot with respect to any point, the only possibility that I have is going up. 
like that, parallel. And this here will be the influence line, and this will be one. This is for the reactions. Move. Next. The next one is going to be four, 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 four. I don't know for what because I lost it. It's here. Now we have to calculate shear. Okie dokie. Shear. Shear, in my opinion, is one of the most, is the most complicated or the less easy, if you want to put it in that way. Now, this is just a simple supported beam. And this point is not a hinge, of course, because if it was a hinge, this part will collapse. It's just a point B. And we have to calculate that. We have this beam. And then we have to calculate the shear at C, at B. What do you do if you have to calculate the shear at B? Let me see. I can just get that and separate the two parts at B. It's not a hinge. I just separate them at B, like that. And I keep everything else the same. And then, once I'm there, I'm going to apply the convention for the shear. This part goes up and this part goes down. Now, let's start with the right part. If I apply this, remember this is here, this is here, because this roller up, uh, this roller is the type of roller that acts in both directions like that. If this is the situation and I try to make this go up, it's not gonna happen. This part is not gonna be able to go up because the pin the only way this could go up is if this roller allows it to go up, but the roller is there, so it's not happening, or this pin fails, and then this pivots like that, but this is not the case, right? So then this part is going to stay straight, like it is. Now this other one is going to come down. Now one of the errors that I see all the time, all the time with the students is that they do this. Nobody is telling you to do that. This is something entirely separated from the rest. If you pull this down, there's nothing holding this. This is not going to do like that. This is just going to do this. And even if you feel in, if you feel the temptation of doing that and doing this, remember that I told you that this line and this line has to be parallel. They have to be parallel. And this line is horizontal, meaning this line also must be horizontal. And the influence line for that will be just that, and this is one. And of course, it's negative because it's coming down. This is the influence line for the shear at B for this thing. Now let's check. Let's check this out. Next one. The next one. I have something like this. This is a hinge. This is a pin. Roller, roller, and we have to calculate the shear at that point. So originally, I have something like this or yeah yeah something like that this is bigger but I don't know if I have a bigger thing yeah bigger okay like that this is what I have this is this is a hinge this is a this is C this is D now when you look at this we have to calculate the shear at B meaning I have to remove this and make it a cut here remember every time that you go there at that point you have to make a cut and separate both sides of the beam so if I do that I'm going to take the hinge because the hinge is there but I'm going to separate this I'm sorry I don't have anything shorter to show you but this is what is happening right so the hinge has to be here the, the roller is there and I'm separating these two sides and now you just apply the uh, the shear this part goes up, this part goes down. If this part has to go down and this is a roller, that's happening. I hope that you see it because it's easy, right? This is a roller. I put my pivot point here and I push it up. This is happening. Now what happens here? I have at this point and at this point I have a pivot point. So if I pull this down, keeping the roller in the position that it is, this is going to happen, like that. And this will be the influence line for that shape, exactly like that. So this is going to come up to this point, 
This is gonna come down, it's gonna come high to the hinge, and this is gonna go like that. Because remember, you put a guided roller here, push it up, this part goes down. When you push this down, it's gonna pivot on top of this, and the hinge is gonna go up. Now, this total distance is one, and if this is once again, if this is A and this is B, this height is gonna be B over L, and this height is gonna be negative A over L. And that's the influence line for this shear. Once I have these two values, once I have this value, I can say, oh, this value is at A, like this distance, this, this, this value is at that distance, and calculate everything in there. Now the last one is also a shear at B, simple supported beam, a fixed support beam here, and nothing else. If I'm going to make the shear at that point, I have to separate the structure in two and put two parts. This part is gonna make, I'm gonna make the cut at B, and in the other side, I'm gonna have this part here. So let me take the cut there. This part is gonna stay fixed. Now, once you apply and you say, oh, this is a guided roller here, blah, 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 blah. This comes down and this goes up. Now, this part, can this be pushed down? No way, Jose. Why? Because it's a fix. This is a cantilever beam, basically, there. This is not gonna be able to come down. Can this go up? Yes, it can go up. Now, same situation. It's not gonna go up like this, or it's not gonna go up like that. If this is there, this, the only way this is gonna go up is up, like that. Because this line and this line have to be, have to be parallel, very well. And the influence line is going to be this, where this distance is one. Shear checked. Now let's go to the moment. I think moment is the easiest one to see. Majority of the time for the students. And um, where is my moment? Give me a moment. Okay. A beam goes into a bar. And as soon as the bartender sees the beam, the bartender asks, What do you want for drinking? And the beam says, Give me a moment, please. You know, according to one of my students, that's the best joke ever because he created it. Okay, moment. There you go. Now, what? remember what we do with the moment. What do we do with the moment? We release at that point. And how do we release it? By putting a hinge at that point. So basically, in this case, it's not that I'm just uh, cutting it. I'm not cutting anything. I'm changing the configuration and I'm saying okay now that structure that was like that it happens that now is like this like that so I'm gonna replace this for this and I'm gonna keep the supports the same thing the supports were before and once we have this in that situation then we apply the we apply the the moment. Okay, moment at B. I don't know what happened. The system stops, but I was able to realize at least that and didn't lose the all, all the other part of the video. So then you have this moment at B. Now, what do we have to do? Remember, the the what we have to do is every time we make a section, wherever we have to calculate the the moment. So we're gonna make the section here at B. And if that was my original girder, my original beam, I'm going to change that by something, which I still don't know what is going to be that something. Maybe something. And then, which one is this? 10 centimeters. Okay, and then I'm going to put a hinge because I have to release that moment. So I'm going to release the moment with a hinge. Where are you? Here, there you go right there hinge and this is a this is a roller here this is a pin and this is a moment now once I have that I apply the moment 
according to the convention that we always have used. Now let's start with this side. If I have this side and this is a, this and this is that, right, a pin and a roller, and my hinge is somewhere here, more like that, B. This is not going to be able to move this part because this is holding it and this is holding it. This couple, this moment, is countered by this, so it's not going to be able to. But when I go to this side, because this is a hinge, if I apply a moment there, this is going to happen. Plain and simple. That's it. So basically, when whenever you, whenever you, you have that situation, then the moment is going to be this, the influence line for the moment. And this distance, remember, the, and not this distance in this case, this angle is one radian. That's the angle that is one radian. And then you can calculate how much is this based on the distances and everything else. Uh, depending how much is this distance, in this case, it's going to be the same value because tangent of this has to be one. And then you get that one. Now this one, second case. Now I have an original girder that is like that. This is a hinge. I'm not creating anything. It's there that hinge. But I have to determine the moment at the point B, right there. Now wh wherever I have to determine the moment at that point, I substitute. I keep my hinge wherever it was and I substitute that. Let me put something longer. Yeah, kind of. By a hinge right there. This is the hinge that I, I don't like that hinge there. That's better. Okay. Like that. This hinge existed, and here, whenever I have to calculate my moment, I'm generating another hinge right there. There you go. Once we have that, the only thing that I have to go is go to here and apply whatever section I did, and I have to apply the convention. Now, if you look at this side, you have to keep this point, this point, and this point without moving, pivoting only at that point. But when I do look at this side, look, this is happening. This is happening, this is happening, this is happening. But if it's gonna pivot on top of this, this has to happen also. You see that? That's the shape. Now let's put the shape here. Then you can draw your diagram. When I have this, remember I became this became a hinge. It's gonna go there. This is gonna come up to this hinge and it's gonna go there again. Because the value that I'm looking for and the cut that I did is here then this angle is going to be 1. And remember, this H, if this is A and this is B, this H here is going to be A times B divided by A plus B. And you can calculate this. If you know this distance and this distance is C, I don't know, you can say H is at B as this H2 is at C, and then you can calculate every single value for that influence line. Last but not least, there you go. You have this one fix support here. We have to calculate the moment, the influence line, or draw the influence line for the moment at B. Make a section at B and change that for a, a hinge. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep fix this here. I'm going to put a hinge over there. Once you do that, what do you do? This one goes in that way. This one goes in that way. Now, let's start with this part. Remember, this is fixed. If I try to move this with the moment going up like that, like that, it's not going to happen because this is fixed. What about this part? If I do this, look, that's exactly the way the inference line should look like. And this is again one. Now wait a second. How come these and that are different? They are different, but they are not. Because if you realize, it, basically these two are fixing it and this is free to rotate only in that direction and this is gonna, gonna happen. Okay, oh, but I don't have those manipulatives. I don't know how I'm gonna do in the exam. I don't use manipulatives, I, well, no, I do use manipulatives, but I use whatever. I get this, for example, if I have this problem, I imagine the three cups here, or the pen, for example, like that. And then I say, okay, um, this hinge is the one that I created. I'm going to do that. But when I do that and it pivots here, it's going to do that. But uh, this part is pulling it down also because it's bringing it to this other part. And this is what it is. 
if I want to do this one, I do this one like that and I put the hinge here. Okay, move it. This doesn't move. Apply the moment. This move like that. You can do it like that. You can do it whatever you want to do it. So keep watching. Keep learning. If you are one of my students, definitely keep watching. If you are not one of my students, definitely keep watching. And I see you next time.